Hello and welcome to my video that is going to be discussing the reunion for Love is Blind. Okay, but before I start my recap, we need to get two things out of the way. The first, ta-da, I got it. Let's try it and rate it one through 10. If you're on TikTok or you have a TikTok, you know, you, you know who, who, you know where that comes from. Um, The Love is Wine is a Chardonnay that was released by Netflix. Mine has been chilling. I was drinking it last night, <laughs> but... Um, it is delicious. Um, it's a little bit fruity. It's a little bit, uh, buttery. It's not super dry, but it's not super sweet. Um, the only bad thing about it is this bottle, which I say it's bad because you can't see how much you've drank. So, you know, you're just pouring it up and uh, I have no idea how much is still left in here, but I'm definitely going to keep this bottle after all is said and done. And, um, I ended up getting this for my birthday. Someone did a lot of work trying to get one of these in my hand because I kept talking about, I keep showing it to y'all like you're going to forget what it is, but I kept talking about how excited I was that they had this. And um, yeah, so this is actually delicious. If you want to pick some up, I'm not being paid by anyone to talk about this. I could be, I could be, but I'm not. Just want to let you know that I, I did try this. It wasn't a gimmick and um, it was actually really good. I wanted to get the Love is Wine cups as well, but there's only so much work I was willing to do. I have the wine, didn't have the cups, the wine was delicious. And now I want to talk about one more thing before we get started today. We need to have a little bit of chart talk, okay? And by chart, I mean birth chart. That's right, we're gonna talk a little bit about astrology right here, right in the beginning, because um, <laughs> even if you're not into it specifically, there are a lot of people that when they watch shows like this, they tend to look for that information. In fact, there's a whole um, community on like Reddit and other places where people are trying to figure out, okay, what's going on with this and this and this. And while I think that that is all in good fun most of the time, I think we have to be careful to not turn um, one person that we might see as a villain into a figurehead for everything we hate about a specific sign. Case in point, Miss Sarah Ann. So last week when I mentioned that she was a Scorpio, I did not mean for my, she had a lot of Scorpio placements. I did not mean for my comment section to turn into a pylon of everything people hate about Scorpios. In fact, I tried to keep it really positive when talking about Sarah Ann as far as um, and, and using that in juxtaposition to where, what I viewed her as. No, let me start over. I tried to focus on the Scorpio traits that I think are positive and that I have seen in Scorpios, specifically Scorpio women, and compared that to Sarah Ann's traits that I thought were kind of trash. And y'all, y'all were not having it. A lot of people were like, uh-uh, no, she's exactly what a Scorpio is. And so I think it's important to note, if you look at a birth chart, there are so many different things that can come out about you and that can um, influence how you express yourself and what your personality is like. And with Sarah Ann specifically, I know I told you guys that I found out she was a Scorpio sun, Scorpio Venus, Scorpio uh, Mercury, and then like a Capricorn moon. And I was really surprised because all of those are placements that are quiet, that like to keep secrets, that like to keep their business off the streets. If you run into a Scorpio, in my opinion, and they are doing a lot of this, they have fire placements, 100% or air. So Sarah Ann having all that heavy Scorpio and then a Capricorn moon, specifically a Capricorn moon surprised me because if you know anything about astrology, you know that your moon sign is like your emotions. It's how you regulate yourself. It's how you practice self-care. It's how you rationalize things that are going on in the world. And it can come out in how you respond to situations. Capricorn moons are extremely pragmatic. They take emotion out of a lot of things. They also can come off as negative. In fact, any water or earth placement can come off as negative. And when Sarah Ann was making all of those videos on social media, to me, it seemed like she was really trying hard to respond to the situation with an upbeat, brazen, in-your-face attitude, which is not at all the way a Capricorn or Scorpio, in my opinion, would get down. Scorpios might have that attitude, but you're not going to get it unless they have, in my opinion, from what I've seen and, and experienced in my life, unless they have fire mercury, fire moon, you are not, or fire rising, they're not going to say all that to you. They're going to make it known another way, but they're definitely not going to get on social media, tell all their business, do all that. You probably won't hear from them. In fact, somebody who moves a lot like their placement is Matthew, which we have a whole thing to get into with Matthew, but... Um, the internet sleuths did their sleuthing and found out that um, found out that Matthew has a Capricorn sun and a Pisces moon. And that makes so much sense to me because of how, well, 
uh, brooding he was, um, how AD ended up saying he was very disciplined. And we'll talk about how she knows that. And that's extremely Capricorn. And also with that Pisces moon, how sensitive he was to what other people would think about him, how ashamed, how quickly ashamed he was. And he was like, I've got to go. I've got to leave when people found out about his trickery. And also how he was able to know, even from behind a wall, the exact thing he needed to know and say to those girls in order for them to to fall at his feet. So very manipulative, but also very sensitive to people picking up on that manipulation. That to me, that's very, that's very, that's very Piscean. And then with his Capricorn son, like, I'm going to stay quiet. I'm not going to say anything. I'm already ashamed. I'm just going to go back to my discipline. So actually, and this is really interesting, Matthew has decided that he's ready to talk in all caps. He posted this on his Instagram story last week. Um, I don't remember what day it was. I don't remember when I grabbed it. But the way that even he set this up is just so indicative of his chart. He said he's got receipts too. So this is the account like I already showed you guys from uh, Sarah Ann's Astrology Island. And if you look here, it says Pisces or Aries moon. Really don't think he has a Aries moon at all. Um, But that Capricorn Mercury, when you get me riled up enough, when I'm ready to speak, oh, I'm going to speak and it's going to be direct and I'm not going to waste a single word, baby. You're going to know exactly where I'm coming from. Also, I want to point out here that he has a Scorpio Venus, which could also add to the intensity that people were feeling from him and that he was able to, um, you know, uh, push through even an opaque or an, a, 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 I should say a translucent wall to those women. Um, Scorpio Venuses are very, very magnetic. And uh, also very good at understanding and studying the person that they would like to be with. So that could also be a good reason or a good um, a good indicator of why he was going about things the way he was and why it was working so well on the women. But yeah, apparently we are going to hear from Matthew. And I don't know what kind of receipts he got, but he already got a plan. And just like a Capricorn... He has laid it out. It is deliberate and it's going to happen on his time. So here we go. Matthew said no. Yet Trevor showed up very, and Trevor is a Leo, very Leo of him, even though he completely on that stage. But yeah, I'm going to show up and I'll speak and I'll go there with my lion mane mullet and say my piece. So that, that makes sense to me. But Matthew speaks Capricorn water type energy to me. Sarah Ann does it. So somebody did the research and they found out that she actually has a Sagittarius moon and a Sag Mars. And I was like, yes, that makes sense. The amount of time she was trying to speak, the way she was speaking, how brazen she was, the way she was trying to keep it light and inspirational and letting people know that, you know, I'm not going to back down. And this is who very fire sign energy, very very, uh, very Sagittarius energy. In fact, uh, after somebody told me that when I looked or I thought back about how she jumped on those jet skis and like rode off into the sun with Jeremy, I was like, yeah, that's that's a that's a Sag move. Uh, absolutely. Um, now, of course, if we step out of uh, if we step out of our astrology charts and we just look at the situation, you have a person that was just very selfish. Right. And so regardless of whatever their birth sign, blah, 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 is this is a selfish person who made a decision ultimately just to benefit themselves and then was surprised when other people weren't on board. And that's what really confuses me about her. But I did just want to say, no matter what your specific experience is with a sign, um, it's it's very easy to kind of turn things into just like a pile on. And I mean, I kind of, I almost did it just a couple seconds ago with, uh, or I did do it a couple seconds ago with Pisces moons. There's a lot of positives about Pisces moons, actually. She's not a Pisces moon. She has a Pisces son. Clay's mom. When I found out that her birthday is March 1, because she posted about it on her Instagram, I was like, one for the home team. Yes. Because, you know, Pisces don't get a lot of good press. But she, to me, is kind of the best of what, like, a good Pisces woman can offer. Like, very understanding, empathetic. You won't cross me again, though. I got you. But at the same time, able to able to meet people where they are with a level of compassion, empathy, and love that is unmatched by any other creature or person on the Zodiac. So there's positives and negatives to every sign. Um, When I looked at the character of Sarah Ann, I was like, I've known so many Scorpio women in my life and I've known them to be very, very loyal to their friends and very, very disappointed or like not interested at all at putting their business in the street. Like above all, they need you to keep it quiet. And so she really surprised me. So if you've had different experiences with Scorpios, that's on you, especially the women. Now, who hasn't been hurt by a Scorpio man? <laughs> but the women, 
the women in my life at least have been different. And if they haven't been different, it's because they've had fire placements. They've had those fire placements. And uh, yeah, that's that's what, to me, that's what's made the difference. If I run into a Scorpio, she's got a lot of air and earth. She moves differently. And it's usually not like Sarah Ann was moving. But, you know, uh, that's my experience. So that's why I looked at her situation that way. And I was glad when I found the Instagram account that broke down their signs in that way because I was like, oh, I was right. She did have a lot of fire in her chart. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about the beginning of this reunion. We have Nick and uh, what's her name? Vanessa back again as the host, even though social media said many times that's not what they want. But what I liked about this reunion is that Nick and Vanessa finally asked questions that we wanted them to ask. I, especially when it came to um, Sarah Ann, when it came to Jeremy. What I also like about that is um, they they have always tried to walk a line, I feel, for contestants between adding to the internet pylon, because honestly, if you F up on reality TV, you should just cut your comments off on all your your posts. Like if you know you went on there and you acted a fool, cut your cut your comments off. Like don't even, don't even play games. Like I respected Kenneth up front for that. I was like, I don't like how you acted but I respect you for having them comments off because honestly, you're nobody's punching bag. Like, yeah, you were an asshole on this show, but people don't have boundaries. So cut them comments off. And I think in the, at least in the videos and episodes I've watched, you've had, you've had a lot of, you, you have a villain every season, you know, and when social media decides who the villain is, they come after them. And so I feel like Nick and Vanessa have always done such a good job at drawing that line in the sand and being like, Hey, They're attacking you out there and it's bad, but we're going to protect you in here. And they protected people a little too much for most of social media. I remember Jackie season. Everybody was like, no, they should have asked her this. They should have asked her that. They basically wanted Vanessa to like load up a paintball gun and just shoot it at the screen whenever Jackie came on camera with Josh. And then in season five, when you had the situation that happened with Lydia and Aaliyah, Same thing, right? People wanted to know, why didn't you go in on Lydia? You should have said you should. And I feel like Vanessa has always been very respectful of the fact that if you acted up on the show, you're already getting it. It's already happening until now. This was the first reunion that I've witnessed where Vanessa asked the questions that people wanted to hear, regardless of how uncomfortable it would make the people that committed the actions. Except for Chelsea. I felt like Chelsea got off really easy, but we'll get to that in a second. So uh, Nick and Vanessa were back, and I think they did a better job this time. I did not enjoy them doing sex talk to each other in between the little love is blind screen. I could have I could have done without that. But overall, I feel like they did a good job as hosts. I like having them back. Um, I also like that they brought in some old love is blind um, couples, especially Brett and Tiff, but we'll get to why that was so important to me. Yeah, I like that they brought them in. I don't know that I liked the couples that were brought in, but I think Netflix probably extended an invitation to however many people and they probably had people turn it down because it is such a visceral and emotional process. There's probably a lot of people that are like, no, I don't want to go back to that. But I did like seeing Brett and, Brett and Tiff. I wish we would have seen Marshall. Um, but I think the fact that he's engaged now to the girl, Shaylee, I think that's her name. Um, we're not going to see him do a lot of stuff with Love is Blind. Um, I wish we would have seen. Let's see who else. I don't know. But I liked that we had those people. I was a little confused about Micah and Izzy and what they were doing on that stage for a while. Until, of course, we found out... Um, at the end. And I don't really know any of the other couples because I didn't start watching until season four. So I was just like, oh, they're here. That's nice. Now moving on to what was happening with the couples from this season when they got on the stage. So I want to start off with the first couple that they spoke to, which was the only successful couple of the season, Amy and Johnny Jimmy. Um, Like I said before, Amy's extremely blessed. Uh, And (laughs) I don't know what prayer her parents prayed. I don't know what prayer her parents prayed. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. I I don't know. I, I don't know. But she's incredibly blessed. I'm I will say I personally am confused at people's confusion when it comes to why he was so uncomfortable about the birth control conversation. Um, that man made it very clear what he wanted from his future, and it did not include having children before they were able to financially take care of them the way that he would have wanted to. Um, 
he was an interesting birth chart for me uh, too to kind of see revealed because when he was talking about money and the way he was talking about it, I was like, ooh, where's the Capricorn? I know this baby a Capricorn. And he's a Sagittarius, but he has a Cap Venus, which is very, very typical for people with that placement. Like they are not playing about their money. So I... I just didn't understand why so many people were like, oh, God, are condoms not, you know, why he's so ridiculous for this belief. Um, condoms are not 100 percent accurate. It's like literally not if you have a woman in your life and she's very fertile, it's very possible for her to still get pregnant with condoms. So the only way to really go into the situation 100 percent, you know, Scott guilt free is to accept that, OK, if I'm in a relationship with this person because they don't want to do this to their body, we could have a baby at any time. And I know Amy said on the show, she says, you know, we decided, you know, I didn't have to do the birth control and that's all we'll say. But we're not stupid. We know what that means. Okay, we know what y'all doing. So unless they have some kind of herbs or tea or a special dance they do every time they're intimate, it's most likely that these two people are playing with fire when it comes to that. And Hey, if you're comfortable with that, that's fine. But I just didn't like the fact that women, we know why we are so and why we have to be so responsible with our bodies, because a lot of the onus of pregnancy does fall on us if you're still in that part of your life where that's a possibility. And so I don't know. I just felt like I didn't like the fact that people were treating him like he was an idiot about it. It's like, well, duh, like he has to be, you know, somebody got to be proactive. Again, it's fine if you don't care if and when you have a baby, that's fine. But I just felt like he got a lot of unnecessary pushback because we all know condoms are not 100% effective. I also respect, though, people who don't want to put the hormones of birth control in their body. I just, let's be real about it. If you don't want to take the birth control, it means that you're okay with having a baby at any time. That's what it means. And if you don't want to eat that, that's, that's all we can do. I've had so many stories of women in my life who have had to go above and beyond to make sure that they don't get pregnant. And then, of course, the cruel reality of life is that some people try and do everything and they never can, but that's another story. But anyway, um, I they brought that up on the show. I was like, Ugh, let's stop playing pretend here. This this man has gone ahead and just said, okay, to be with this woman, I'm we're just going to see what happens. It's fine. And uh, let's stop pretending like condoms are some sort of superhero when it comes to protecting people from pregnancy because, because they're just not. The condoms can break. We... Let's be for real. Anyway, so that was pretty much the only thing that happened with Johnny, Jimmy, and Amy that I was like, Ugh, whatever. I loved her lip color, loved her lip color. And their little video that they made about their time um, together of the past year was really cute. Uh, but in general, she's a blessed woman and, you know, he's a blessed man. And it was one of the best love stories of this season. And someone said about AD, they were like, oh, of course she accepted, you know, what Clay was doing. She wants love. She wants to be loved, so of course. And I was like, we all want to be loved. The cruel reality of life is that you either turn out like Amy or you get an AD story. And you it, it all depends on who crosses your path. You can show up and you can have all this love and this big open heart, but you run into an idiot. And so now you look stupid. And it's just a gamble. It's just, it's just luck, fate. Like we don't, I would never judge anybody just because they act. Well, let, let me back up. Yes, I would. But, but I judge them from a place of empathy. Like, I, I understand. I just wish that you would do better. And that's specifically for AD, but we'll get there. Anyway, moving on from Amy and Johnny, the next thing that we did, I believe, was we talked to Jeremy and Laura. So the first thing I want to say before I get into this is Jeremy's hands are so tiny. I didn't realize that initially, um, but I know it now. So his hands are tiny, and that's I'll say that. Um, Jeremy had a lot come out about him before this show aired, and I hinted at it a little bit in my last video, but I will say now that I've learned so much more, and it was a really nasty fight that he'd had with an ex of his. It involved weapons. It involved people having to run from the house into the night. It was very dramatic. It left me feeling like Jeremy just in general puts the women in his life through a lot, and, uh... Almost as if he doesn't really care who you are as long as you're willing to go down with him with whatever crap he's doing. That's how he appears to me anyway. So uh, we had Jeremy there. They pulled up Laura on the screen who looked beautiful. And I haven't really changed my opinion on her. I, I don't know that I would be friends with her um, in life. Uh, not like she's knocking down 
my daughter to be friends with me, but I don't know that I would be friends with her, but I do know that I respect her. I think she's incredibly well-spoken. I don't think she misses. When she wants to cut somebody down, that girl don't miss. And I liked being able to relive her version of events when it came to what happened the night that she just woke up and knew something was wrong. Isn't that crazy about intuition? Especially that feminine intuition, intuition, excuse me. Like nothing could, nothing could be happening. And all of a sudden you're like, something's not right, but something, something's off and you end up being right. It's, it's always crazy when that happens. So I loved that. I loved hearing from Laura, even though I don't know if I'd be able to sit across from her, you know, in person. Um, I did love hearing that. I did not like when she brought up the bean dip thing, because I felt like she still didn't get it. But she did say she'd apologize. But AD's face, AD did not look like she had accepted that apology to me, to me. But she said she'd apologize. So whatever. Let's talk about when Laura got to talk to Sarah Ann. Again, y'all know I'm perplexed by Sarah Ann, but a little bit less now that some of my inquiries were confirmed by social media sleuths. And now I'm just sort of wondering what kind of magic Jeremy works on these women to get them to abandon their principles. And like I said, go down on a sinking ship with him. When it was revealed that, you know, not only have he and Sarah Ann been together, but he's also, they've also broken up. They also, you know, they've been through it. And yes, she's still standing 10 toes down for that man. No issues with him. I was torn on whether or not to be like, oh, well, at least they love each other. Or to be like, do we need to have another Netflix show, Operation Save Sarah Ann? Like, what is going on? What is going on there? I was also surprised when they decided to air the scene where Sarah Ann approaches Laura at the dock and apologizes to her for sending the message. I think most people are in agreement, no matter what AD said to her, because I didn't agree with AD and I didn't think she should get into it at all. I know a lot of people were like, she told her, AD read her. I could have I could have done without it. Um, but no matter what AD said to her, I still don't think she was wrong for sending a message to say, hey, I enjoyed meeting you. If anything changes, I really liked our connection. Nothing at all, especially when they first got out of the pods. I'm sorry. It was on him to respond or not to respond. And I do like the fact that they brought up how hypocritical it was that Laura was like, you never send a message like that. That's someone else's man. And yet she told Jessica to send the message to uh, Johnny Jimmy or Jimmy John or whoever that man was that Chelsea was with. And I think it's interesting that they brought that up and neither one of those women could really answer for themselves. Well, Jessica did. Jessica did a good job in general for the most part. But um, it's, yeah, it's just interesting that Laura was like, okay, black and white, no, that's wrong. But it was when it was her friend, when it was someone that she cared about, she was like, it's, yeah, go ahead and let him know. And what's even worse is that it's because she knew how badly Chelsea and Johnny Jimmy were doing. John, who, what is the man's name? Jimmy. How badly Chelsea and Jimmy were doing. She knew and went behind Chelsea's back and told someone to send, like, I feel like that whole storyline kind of got dropped because what ended up happening to Laura was more embarrassing and, you know, worse in general. But yeah, that wasn't cool. And she's guilty of enforcing or encouraging the same behavior when it's someone else's situation. So I like the fact that they brought that up and Jessica was like, look, I apologize. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I think Laura might've apologized for it. I'm not sure, but just go back to what happened with Laura and Sarah Ann on the docks. Um, I was actually looking for that in the first edit of the show. I felt like at the time I would have been more okay with Sarah Ann if she actually had apologized to Laura for sending the message and letting her know hey, I didn't mean to hurt you in any way. What bothered me was that after she gave that apology, Laura said, look, thank you so much. Um, it's on him what he decides to do. Be aware of him. And Sarah Ann was like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And then skipped herself down that dock and jumped right into a relationship with him. To me, it felt like the whole conversation was a waste of time. Like you were just telling her that to save face when you knew what you were going to do the whole time. Why are you talking to her? Because you want to feel better? Okay. 
because it's they're, they're, it, it makes no sense any other way. But yeah, I did appreciate them airing that. And I think Vanessa did say, or maybe I made it up, but I think someone did ask, or maybe it was Sarah Ann who asked like, you know, why didn't they show ABCD? And Vanessa was like, well, I think they abandoned that when they saw what ended up happening with you and Jeremy, that you guys did get together, that you did. So I think any kind of resolution that you might've been able to have with Laura was just out of the window when you did that. Thought it was interesting when they asked Sarah Ann, do you still talk to any of the women from the show? That is a, that was interesting. That was interesting just because um, I feel like all of the women in their own way, especially, well, not all of them, um, but Jessica and Chelsea and Laura were toxic in their own way. But I do feel like in a lot of friend groups, there's going to be a queen bee. I feel like Laura is the queen bee of that group. And I feel like when you piss off the queen bee, even if people in the group have done things of equal or similar disrespect, you piss off the queen bee, everybody's done with you. And I feel like that's what happened with Sarah Ann. Like if, I don't know, if uh, Laura was not likable, if everybody was like, oh, we really, if, if Laura was Irina, right? People would probably be like, oh, well, you know, he's better with you anyway and screw her. But for whatever reason, those girls really love and adhere to and support Laura and they don't care for Sarah Ann at all. And uh, I think that it also came out that she was talking about someone behind their backs or whatever. I just, my big question was, why does Sarah Ann put on her best Sears 1997 prom dress and come out to this reunion anyway? What did she think she was going to accomplish? Listen, if you've got people coming at you a hundred different ways in your comment section, you don't talk to none of the other girls from the show. You didn't already said your piece on a TikTok. What do you think is going to happen? And it would be different if she was like, like Vanessa said, you know, if her and Jeremy showed up and they were, you know, humble and they were quiet and they were just like, yeah, you know, we're we're here, but, you know, we're sorry if we hurt anyone. And that's all we really came to say. Thank you. It would be different at that. But Sarah Ann came out there fire placement swinging. She was ready to fight for that tiny little pink fingered man. And I was just confused as to why she was so confused that no one was like, yay, Sarah, say it. Do it, girl. We love you. People have been telling you that. I don't think she, I think it's hard for her to process how permanent people's opinion of you can be with, even with something they view over a short period of time. And for the most part, especially when it comes to the general public, are very unforgiving. And so you kind of already failed in the eyes of the public. Like, stay home. But she came out there. She embarrassed. And you know what? I, I was like... <laughs> Uh, at the end, when she got up and ate from the little buffet they had out there, I was like, you know what? You can't. Yeah, hey, this this girl said, I'm going to be here. Get used to it. I'm going to have me a free plate of food. So you know what? Do At the end of the day, that's not how I would have conducted myself um, at all. But hey, she's she, when she said, I'm going to stand 10 toes down, she meant it. And um, like I said, from the beginning, she perplexes me. I don't understand her, but whatever. Okay, let's move on. So the next couple that they gave us was AD and Clay. And before AD and Clay even got a chance to speak, I had already spent some time for the first time on Clay's Instagram. I hadn't really looked. Oh, wait, that's not true. When I went looking for his friend Josh to figure out like what was going on with him, it was Josh's story. He gonna be on the next season or what? what is he? What's going on? And then I couldn't find him in the friends. And so Okay, you know how they say you give some girls a, uh, you know, just a name and they can find a guy like the FBI? That's not me. But this is Josh. Found him. It wasn't hard. You literally just had to scroll through some of Clay's posts. I'm I'm terrible at that kind of thing. But I thought this was interesting. He posted this, living, lying on a podcast while your boy making moves. And I believe this is in reference to AD doing all of the different interviews that she's been doing, telling her story. Apparently, Josh is not a fan of AD's story, but whatever, dude, your friend left a girl at the altar, so he doesn't get a chance. Like, she can say whatever she wants as long as she doesn't. She can say whatever she wants. I'm sorry. He 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 trashed her like other people coming at him and criticizing him that weren't in this situation. All right. Take it up with them. But as far as what AD says about him. As long as she can do whatever she wants, that man embarrassed the hell out of her on international online television and one of the biggest reality shows ever like she gets to say what she wants get over yourself 
But yeah, he's a cutie and I found him. Okay, back to the video. But that's the only time that I went and looked at Clay's Instagram. And I saw a lot of a lot of hate. A lot. Initially, I didn't see that. Like the last time I checked Clay's Instagram was when I first when we first met Josh. So I don't know. And I still I didn't go to the comments because I was like, whatever. He hadn't done anything to really piss us off yet. Well, Clay was looking like he he might be all right, even though he kept giving her those speeches where he was telling her, hey, uh, I really actually don't need to be married because I will cheat. He's given her all those speeches, but it seemed like he might try. Well, I don't know. I don't know. When I checked his Instagram before the show, the finale aired or the reunion aired, I was like, good Lord, they have found you. Um, I definitely Clay's another one where after that altar thing aired, I would have turned my comments off. Like, mm -mm, this is too much. But what I loved for him was uh, his family was really, really protective of him, especially his mom. His mama was in there defending her baby boy. And that's how I found her Instagram and how I followed her. She's she's always reminding him of his character outside of what happened in this show. And when we think about what happened with Clay and AD, again, like I said in my last video, as much as I want to hate him for what he did to her, I am also looking at her to have a little bit of accountability. That word, I feel like it's so overused. But I am looking for that because he kept telling you, he kept telling you and you chose not to hear it because you wanted to be married. Again, I understand. Even if it's not wanted to be married, I understand that you wanted to be loved. Oh, I understand. But then we can't be upset when people show us who they always were the whole time. We can't be upset. Like we have to say, because I wanted this so badly, I put myself in this position. I allowed myself to be hurt. We have to be able to say that. I feel like it's just so freeing and it helps you to move on and heal so much faster from situations. You're not mad at that other person and what they did, what they said and did, you know. Uh, now, AD did come out and say, Clay promised me he wouldn't embarrass me. But why would you listen to a man who's clearly fighting with himself? He was like, I wouldn't believe Clay if he told me there was sand on the beach. He is at war. Why would you? But because you want to listen, because you want this to work out. With AD and Clay, I feel like the way things unfolded on the show is it, like a zero-sum game. You know, they both were toxic in their own ways. And I feel like they just, her deep desire to be loved and admitted low self-worth that she was operating from and his deep desire to win and to be this man that he thought he should be even before he was ready. I believe it just canceled each other out and you got what you got. Now, as far as what they said at the reunion, I actually had to turn the TV off and just stare at the wall when Clay told her, I made a mistake at the altar and you are the love of my life. AD was not expecting that. And the way her face dropped, the way she, and immediately she started to cry. I was like, oh, I might be done with this show because I thought that that was so manipulative of him. And I, I think sometimes you can be manipulative and that can't, that's not your intention. But anytime you drop a big love bomb on somebody like that and they didn't know you were going to do it. And then the way he did it and where he did it and when he did it, unfortunately that equals out to you being manipulative. And that's, un that's unfortunate as that, that is what it is. Um, he put her in such an awkward position and I think he has so many people who are so angry with him. Nobody was like, get together with him. Yeah, give him another chance. Like everybody understood if she would have just rolled her eyes and turned the other way. Nobody would have. Nobody would have held it against her. But I just I thought it was so unfair of him to say that. And I loved how she said, I feel like he is doing the work. And I feel like the conversation that his parents had is so important. And his mom is amazing. But respectfully, I don't want to be his mom. But good for her. Good for her. Um, overall, I was proud of how AD handled herself in that situation. I was proud of how she handled herself on stage. I was not proud of her when she admitted that she went on some dates with Matthew. Because he truly was Hannibal Lecter. 
in those pods, um, an assassin, an emotional assassin. And, you know, when they showed the receipts of what he said to her and Amber, I did feel like there was a slight difference, I will say. I felt like when he was talking to Amber, it was all kind of conject, like it felt very, you are my second choice. Like, well, would you do this? Well, you know, I'd need to talk to your dad. Okay, so you would be okay with leaving with me then. Okay, like he was just trying to see with her. Like, okay, well, this might work out with her. This might pan out. Okay, but with AD, it was like, I would do this with you today. All you have to do is give me a word. You know what I mean? Like the difference between, hey, would you? And I would. That's that's the difference. With me, to me, with AD, he sounded a lot more sold. Like he wanted her and Amber was an option. And the whole thing about talking to the dad and so on and so forth, um, and again, I, I've i already said what I think about him as far as like his Zodiac traits or whatever, but I just think he's the type of person that knows his target. He probably knows women are very sensitive around their fathers. There's no way of him to know that her dad had passed away. So that's that's that was just an unfortunate irony. But um, yeah, he uh, he definitely had a game plan and he had two women in mind and he didn't want to leave without anybody. And so the reason why I was so disappointed in her when she said that she'd gone on a date with him is because he said he was leaving to go get Amber. Like he treated you like, what what did Matthew really want? And I and she says, you know, he reached out and he apologized. And I don't know. Here's my thing. You can say what you wouldn't do until you're in the situation, right? To me, I already know me. And if I'm in a situation with you like that and I'm feeling feelings from behind a wall and um, then I get a chance to see what you look like, I've already told you I would have folded for Matthew in the real world. Hell, I have, you know. Um, but I, I, I can't say I wouldn't have gone on dates with him, but I can say I would have taken that to my grave and I would not have mentioned that on the show. Oh, people are going to find out. But how are they going to find out? Nobody was talking about it on social media. At least not in the places I was checking. I don't check a lot of the dark, deep places online, but I didn't see no TikTok videos about that. I didn't see, and it, like nobody was nobody was talking about that beforehand. So how like there were rumors out there that turned out not to be true, like Chelsea and Jimmy still being together, or um, Clay and AD still dating, etc. But nobody was talking about her going on dates with Matthew. I would have said that to my grave, or you know, if Vanessa knew she could bring it up, but I'm not confirming. Cause that is so embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Don't don't admit that. When she admitted that, I was like, "Oh, girl, why you say that? We were so proud of you, and now, ooh. there are some things you're gonna do, some decisions you're gonna make, and it shouldn't be on. Uh, it shouldn't be everybody's business. Okay. And there's sometimes we might act against our best self interest, but that shouldn't be everybody's business. And I think with the narrative that AD was already telling with this show, we didn't need that extra part about her meeting with Matthew. We really didn't need it. Um, but we got it. And, uh, overall, I think she, I loved when she said to Clay, um, he was like, yeah, you know, I think I was ready. I, I was, he's not ready, but that baby need a journal. And he also needs to understand that going to therapy doesn't mean that the work is done. It means it's a continual process. We're continuing try, to try and learn ourselves. We're con we're going to continue. No, just because you go to therapy, it doesn't mean you emerge perfect ever. And I think, um, because going to therapy and getting mental help and uh, mental health help, et cetera, I think because that's become so popularized recently that telling somebody, go to therapy, get help, there's this idea that there's one day you're going to reach a point where you're perfect or you're you're better and you're so much better that you're never going to upset anybody again or make another mistake. And I think Clay needs to let go of perfectionism and understand that it's okay to be a work in progress. You can still be loved. Going to therapy a couple times over a year or whatever, it doesn't mean that you're going to ever be fixed. It means that you are promising to always be working on yourself. And I noticed that he kept saying, you know, when he was talking to AD, I've been going to therapy, I did the work, and now the work continues. It always continues. It's not finished. And just because you're doing the work doesn't, it doesn't make that her problem. Nobody has to invest in you on the ground floor if they don't want to. Nobody had, like, I, as much as we yell at AD to love herself, Clay needs to love himself. Clay does not love Clay. As much as people put what happened with him and AD all on AD, oh, she doesn't love herself. She's dark-skinned. It's her lashes. He thinks he can do better physically. 
he does not like himself. He does that. I have always disagreed with the, if you can't love yourself, how you going to love somebody else? I have always disagreed with that because I'm like, okay, um, you know, this person over here doesn't always love themselves. But, they, but you do have to like yourself enough to let somebody in. You do have to like yourself enough to believe you deserve to be loved. You do have to like yourself enough not to talk yourself out of a relationship on the day you're supposed to get married. So I don't know. Um, I felt bad. I genuinely felt bad for him. And I, I wrote down on a piece of on my notes, I said, I have a heart for Clay. It could never make me hate him. I don't think he needs to get married. Um, I'm proud of him for showing up and still being vulnerable. And oh, I love what he said about Brett and Tiff. I love that. And I wrote down in my notes, give these men mics. These are the kind of men that need to have podcasts. They are black men who are owning up to the fact that, yes, they have come from broken families, single parent families, families where people cheat, et cetera, et cetera. They're not trying to blame women for all their problems. Hallelujah. They're not trying to blame this person and this person, but they're coming together and saying, I, my problem is I don't know how to be better than the people that came before me. And then they're able to see each other and say, well, you're doing a good job of it. Can you teach me how, how were you able to overcome where you came from? I would love to see an extended conversation with that man. I just forgot his name. I want to call him Wade. What's his name? Clay and Brett. I would love to see that. And I love the fact that they both got very emotional talking about it. And again, I go back to my point about Amy versus AD. Uh, Tiffany was another one. She showed up. She just wanted to be loved. What if Tiffany had crossed paths with Clay? Huh? What would have happened? Right? And so so often in life, we look at someone and we're like, you single today because you're desperate. You just want to be loved. You pick all the wrong people. But I swear to God, it is so much more out of our hands than we like to admit. Like, yes, you can continue to make choices against you. Absolutely. But how many people have shown up to a situation, clear eyes, full hearts, and they lose because they cross paths with the wrong fool? <clears throat> if you find somebody good, be grateful. Be grateful. That is grace that you were that you were given that. Be grateful because um, you, you cross paths with a Brett and you could have met a Clay. OK, but anyway, um, I love their conversation. I think he's a good guy. It'll be interesting to see who he actually ends up dating because I don't think AD is going to go back there. And yeah, that is my opinion of them. OK, um, this next part, I'm not really going to spend a whole lot on because I don't care. I don't like that we got so much of Jessica complaining about how Jimmy responded to her letter. I already told you, and I mean, I didn't tell her because clearly we don't talk. Men don't respond well to big expressions of emotion like that. Like, tr take it from, like, I'm, I'm just, I speak from experience. They don't like that shit. Like, there's a reason why people say, and I don't agree with this, but there's a reason why people say the guy had to love you more. Or he, has, he has to at least be, you gotta know he's he's in it before you unleash on him. Because when I say they will shut down, they will shut down. And I mean, I think people in general, everybody says they want raw and real and vulnerable, but very few people are actually able to handle any kind of emotion, any kind of thing that's just thrown at them from another person's vantage point when that person is being so raw, so real, so vulnerable. If, if, if somebody's bringing that to you and you're not able to match their energy, it kills the relationship so fast. And that's friendships, that's professional relationships, that's romantic relationships. Jessica, just accept that when you wrote him that letter, he realized the energy, he was not able to match your energy and let him go. And I think she was mad at him or she said she was mad at him because he went on a show and he was like, um, you know, I like the edit she got or whatever. And basically saying that um, she was a mean girl or he called her out for that and she didn't like that, which, which I think is fair because she's, I like her route as far as how she handled it publicly, like not throwing people under the bus because it's very easy to do that, um, you know, after you've been on a show like this. But as far as spending so much time on how he responded to the letter and who left the meeting first and so on and so forth, oh, why are we here? And you know why we were here? Because they didn't want us to focus on what happened with Jimmy and Chelsea. Because I think of all the cast members this season, Chelsea's gotten it the worst online. And so Chelsea was Vanessa's like, get get out of jail free card, like like save, you know, save this one. She was Vanessa's Jackie in this situation. She just was, I think even more so because unlike Jackie, 
the girls of this season really, really protected Chelsea. And AD said, like the st- like the cast actually likes Chelsea. They didn't like Jackie. The cast actually likes Chelsea. They didn't like Irina. I think that makes all the difference. You can have a horrible edit and have a horrible experience with somebody on the show, but it's the experience that you've had with the other cast members that will actually end up changing how how everybody responds to you and how they want you to be responded to, especially in the reunion environment. Um, AD said something about Chelsea that was really interesting to me. She said, watching the scenes with you and Jimmy was really hard because I don't know that part of you. I don't know you to be that insecure, that emotionally unsettled. I know you to be friendly. I know you to be like, that's not a Chelsea I know. So it was like, who is this person? And it reminded me of something I said a few months ago. I made a video and I said that you can be in a relationship with someone and they bring out a monster in you. And that person just pushes all your buttons. And when people witness you around them, it's like, who are you? Get away from this person. And also, you can be in a situation where somebody brings out the absolute best in you. They make you feel good about yourself. You feel good when you're around them. I believe that our relationships that we have, um, it's a lot more grace than we want to own up to. And sometimes we we really don't know somebody unless we've seen them in a situation around things that make them happy and in a situation where their buttons are being pushed. And you can't really judge the character of someone entirely until you witness them in all those situations. I think two people can come together sometimes and bring out the worst in each other. And I think that's what happened with Chelsea and Jimmy. I think he ran into her and he was the person that brought out all of these insecurities and points of healing that she needed to face. And yeah, so I, I wanted them to ask more questions about their relationship, but I feel like it was decided before the show even aired that Chelsea was going to be protected and they were not going to dive into that. So to make up for that, we got Jessica crying about this letter for like 10 minutes. I just didn't give a damn. I'm sorry. Um, But she's a beautiful girl and she's going on perfect match, which brings me to Trevor. And I think I'm uh, I think Trevor came out either before or after or whatever. But Trevor was so interesting because he should have stayed home. Mm -hmm. Trevor should have stayed home. And Trevor wasn't honest when they asked him, oh, so you thought like you could do this for your career? And he said, what career? Perfect match. Uh, Love is blind. The OGs. Um, love is blind, the blindest. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there. Uh, being obligated or or working with Netflix in a promotional capacity like Lauren and Cameron have done for years. In fact, people were asking where Lauren and Cameron were. She posted and said she doesn't have to watch the show this season, so she's not going to. She's officially like out of that contract, whatever it was. But there is a career there. If you can make it through this stepping stone, this first season, if you can make it through this, build a social media following, do whatever. There's a career there as an influencer, as a reality TV star. Like you can go from show to show to show. I remember there's this guy, Harry Dowsey, who did Hot or Not a few years ago. He's been on Dancing with the Stars. He's on tour with Dancing with the Stars right now. Like there's so much you can do on the social media side if you get through. And Trevor knew that. And so when they asked him about a career, he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, actually, he just completely froze like Mitch McConnell. He had nothing to say, but he knew what they're talking about. And I think his explanation of why he texted that girl what he texted her, well, he was lying. We weren't dating, dating. We were, I just told her I loved her and I wanted to marry her. Uh, But we weren't dating, dating. We weren't, you could have stayed home, buddy. You could have stayed home. And I thought it was interesting when, uh, because Trump was too big to be acting like that. He's too too big for all that. It's just too much man to be, can I just go home now? Yes, you can go home. Okay, you could have stayed home. I do want to say this about Jimmy. He's a doormat. He needs to uh, get a backbone when it comes to owning up to who he really is in situations, like how he really feels. I, While I know that there are men and women who have uh, heterosexual relationships, let me back up. While I know that there are men and women who claim that their heterosexual relationships are just platonic, for me personally, um, because I told you guys in the last video what I believe is underneath a lot of those relationships. And as a result, um, when I'm dealing with a guy and he says, oh, you know, I have friends. 100% of the time, I know that those are women that he sleeps with when he can. 
And if we were to be together in a relationship, that that I I would be so, di- uh, uh-uh. I don't I don't like that. Now you have women out there who that wouldn't bother. I don't care about them. He's with me now, so whatever. But me, you got to cut all them off. Unless it's like your sister. Unless it's I don't want to know that you're talking to her. And I'm I'm sorry about it. But unless you're like de- uh, unless we know we're soul deep in love, I think it's really really even and even men. I just think you know the reality of your connection with that person. You know it. Be honest about that with me. And I think he was trying to do that with Chelsea. And I think she proved that like she wasn't comfortable with that. And so he was right. That's where he should have broke things off with her. But um, in general, anytime he's confronted by a woman, he is uh, he just kind of lays down. He's like a dog that rolls over with his little paws up. He, when he was talking to Jessica, he was like, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. Oh, well, I didn't mean to. Do, oh, okay. Look, man, just admit. Uh, I was overwhelmed by the letter and I apologize for dragging you through the mud. I thought that's what you were doing to me. But just admit like what you've done and move on. Um, he's too uh, milk toast for me. I don't I don't like that. Um, yeah. OK, the last thing I'm going to talk about is Brittany and Kenneth. Um, Brittany should run for the president of the United States at some point or do something. I just I like her so much. Um, she is very, uh, she, she very much gives like first lady of the contemporary Baptist church. Like she's just very, she's, it'll be interesting to see who she does end up with, but I love what she said about her and Kenneth actually developing a friendship. They posted a TikTok before the reunion. And I was like, what that mean? Y'all together? What's going on? But I love that they were able to build a friendship and that they talk to each other every day. Um, and yeah, I love like the grace she gave him. And, you know, he said something that is true, unfortunately, for all of us who, I mean, I was ready to drive down to whatever headquarters. Where are they? They are in Charlotte. I was ready to drive to Charlotte and go pick her up in that scene where he just left her to cry by herself, you know, and Netflix was playing that ridiculous song. But when he told the audience, people handle things different ways. I had the way I was going to handle it on camera. And then when I left the house, I called Clay and I was in shambles. I was torn apart. I was not okay. And uh, we didn't get to see that because that didn't fit Netflix's editing of of him as a character. So um, as long as Britney's forgiven him and they're friends and he's a good friend to her, I guess, I guess he's all right. So yeah, so that was the reunion. It was very interesting. It was long. Huh? It, was, it was so long. And I'm so, and I'm in awe of those creators who literally watched the reunion and then 30 minutes later, their review was up. Like, you guys don't have to go to sleep, but um, whatever, here's here's my review. Uh, I will say, finally, I thought Vanessa's takeaway about the show in general is so interesting and it's why people get so ripped apart online for their weaknesses or praised so much for their virtues. Uh, she said, you know, through a show like this, we all learn so much about ourselves. And that's something you have to realize anytime you put yourself in the public eye um, in any way with so many people jumping on social media these days. And, you know, I'm going to show myself and be myself. Understand that people are going to use you as a puzzle to solve for. And if you're not comfortable with that, you need to stay. <laughs> you need to stay. Just You need to chill out. Um, I don't think anybody understands how much people are going to use their behaviors, their relationship choices, hell, their zodiac sign to not only understand more about the world and to prove or disprove certain theorems and ideas they might have about themselves and people around them, but um, to also just uh, to learn from and to grow from. When Vanessa said, you know, this show is like therapy, it is. There are scenes that I watched, like I said, the scene with uh, Clay's mom and dad, I was like, that is therapeutic as hell. There are so many people that needed to see that conversation. It's so important. Uh, human beings, and I said this last year in relationship to why we would never mind our business about certain celebrity relationships. We have always learned who we are, what we are, why we do what we do, who we're doing it to, et cetera, through watching things be performed in front of us, through drama, through writing stories down, whatever. That's why story content is so popular. How can I learn or experience a vignette of life and take away something from it that's either going to tell me more about myself or more about the people around me? Um, Very important stuff. And I just, I wish that anybody who's going to be on a show like this in the future, because I don't think any of them are ever prepared. 
when, you know, the social media comes out with their pins and pads and, you know, their reviews and rants and recaps, none of them are prepared for how visceral and how real it gets. And um, it's going to be that way every time. And I don't think people necessarily do it in bad faith. I think it's just, it's a part of human nature to be really, really into and to get a lot out of shows like this. And as someone who never watched anything like this before and is now so excited it's over so I can be free again, <laughs> um, I, I definitely uh, own up to that. This is definitely one of my favorite shows and I hope we get a new season soon. So anyway, that is my recap for this reunion. Um, I, I My next couple of videos aren't gonna be about TV. I'm so sorry, I have other things planned. So if you join me to talk about TV, then you might not see my face for a while, but um, next season you'll see me again. That is it for this video. As always, thank you for watching.